Hey, it's Sean and Mike, Brew-Dudes.com. We've got two pints in front of us, and they have some of the rockiest heads I've seen in a long yeah. time. So I wonder what Mike brewed here. I believe it's an American Blondale. Yes. Not a Canadian Blondale, no. but an American Blondale. Yes. So I'm going to let him talk about it. So it's getting warmer, and uh, <laughs> it's time for some lighter beers. And so um, I wanted to brew an American Blondale, and I was going through the ingredients, things I wanted to do. And so... Mm. Um, again, you know, building on stuff we've been playing with, our, our hop knowledge and some of our adjunct knowledge. Oh boy, here But we also, go. Um, also there's a twist in here. There is a yeast that I think someone requested a long time ago, and it's something that I've wanted to play with, and I just haven't been able to do it, so we'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, this is a, a pretty straightforward American Blonde Ale recipe. I'm not really modeling it after anything in particular. Um, but let me tell you what this is. So this is eight pounds of Vireman Pilsner malt. It's one pound of flaked barley, one pound of Carahel, uh -huh. um, which is like 13 love, just to give you some of that, just a little bit more complexity in the background, yeah. but not yeah. a lot of color, just a little complexity okay. without having to get into like a crystal 40 or something like that, right? Um, and then it's half an ounce of Cascade for 60 minutes. Okay. And then the real kicker hop here is two ounces for the last 10 minutes of Laurel. Uh, <laughs> I'm right? trying to pick, figure out I wanted what that it is. to be something unique. I, I just, I didn't want it to just be, I could have gone all Cascade, I could have thrown in some Azaka or whatever. Sure. But I didn't want it to, but I didn't want it to come across as being uh, pale ale-ish or just any of anything in that category. Fruity. I just wanted to have something yeah. fruity without actually putting fruit in the beer yeah, and be yeah. a little bit whatever. And, um, and I, and th you know, what else am I going to do with Laurel hops? So I figured I'll just, I'll just use those. I had two ounces, put it in there. And I sort of like the way it came out. We'll talk about it in a bit. Yeah. Um, but the yeast I used, the yeast I've been wanting to use for a long time, this was uh, Fermentis, the Green Package K97. Oh, okay. Which is their Kolsch yeast. It's really a German ale yeast yeah. that a lot of people use for Kolsch. And I think people assume the K might stand for Kolsch. Um, but some people use this for making like wheat beers and uh -huh. stuff like that. And so the so the, so I've always just been curious what the real yeast character is on this. I think you can pick up some interesting notes on this. What I was really going for is not necessarily a Kolsch, an American blonde ale. But one thing I really love about Kolsch is is you only get Kolsch with a good Kolsch yeast strain. Is that it finishes with this strange. Yes. Pillowy, soft, like, <laughs> oh, I like agree. oh, that's really <laughs> nice, agree. right? Yep. And I think there's a little bit of that after you get through it the is. American hop character. You're left with this Pilsner malt puffiness that mm. you only get with a cold yeast. So um, I mashed this baby at 150 for 75 minutes just to try to maximize fermentability. The um, Starting gravity on this guy was only 1042, and he finishes at 1009 for ABV of 4.3%, because I wanted something super drinkable, super light, yep. and um, something to chase down Belgian triple. So, <laughs> well, we'll have a flight. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, this has been in the keg for only a couple of days, but it is clearing up nicely. It was actually pretty cloudy. Kolsch, these German ale yeast strains are notoriously poor flocculators, and it was pretty hazy for um, the first day that I, when I was transferring from the fermenter, I'm like, this thing is going to be way too hazy to put on camera. But it's actually sat cold for a couple of days here, for about, you know, three days, like I said, and it's, uh, it's, it's getting there. It's clearing up there. I didn't. I thought about gelatinizing it in the keg before I started carbonating it, but I didn't have time for that. So, <laughs> started carbonating, and and here it is. So, Laurel to me is more of a American version of a, like uh, a noble hop, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, you know, on the aroma, I'm picking like a lot of like woody notes and things like that. What are you, what are you getting from that? I mean, there's not like a strong. Yeah, no, I agree with you. There is something very unique there in terms of that. Yeah, yeah. A woody note is a really interesting uh, point because it's not, it's not herbal. Um, maybe it's a little earthy woody. Yeah, um, earthy wood. But there yeah. is a little bit of. There is a little bit. I, I get a very small amount of something off from the malt too. Yeah. I think there's that that Laurel, that two ounce late edition of Laurel. 
in the carahel, maybe whatever. It's just a little bit, um, and whatever the yeast esters are, it's all coming together to give you something woody. There's a little bit of malt character there, a little bit yeah. of like a, um, again, I always talk about pills and malt this way, but a little bit of like a white crackery type yeah. of thing. Yeah, right, right. You know, I think it's not super strong, surely. And but that's what I'm, I was going for. That's what I was going for. Yeah. To me, American Blonde Ale should be. You know, super approachable, should be dry, should be um, just a little bit of, of base malt character, uh, maybe a subtle amount of complexity, which is why I put the Carahel in there. The flaked barley is in there just to try to maintain some level, just to make sure that I don't lose all the body from an extended yeah. mash, but getting a good attenuation. Um, it should really, to me, just be crisp and <laughs> drinkable and not a lot else, but yeah. I just wanted to give it a unique punch with some yeah. brow. Oh, right on, right yeah. on. And I think once you get into the flavor of it and that aftertaste and that Kolsch experience, that's where it kind of pays off. That pillowy aftertaste yeah. it is so wonderful. It's very lifting. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the best way to put yeah. Kolsch. You drink it, you go, oh, that's nice. Like a Pilsner or um, just something something like that. You know, any type of like really crisp, what we call crisp lager, it like, Finish is crisp, but for me, Kolsch. This is like you drink it. It's like, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm here, and yeah. it's 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 levitating. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah, I think that Pilsner has its own dry quality. Oh, let me like drink some more of this Kolsch. Is you drink it, and then it's like, oh, there's uh, there's a little bit of a different quality. Yeah, yeah. Like with Pilsner, I'm ready. I'm, I drink it. I'm like, oh, I, I gotta have another sip. And you're like you're ready to sip it. But with coal, it like sort of forces you to contemplate contemplate <laughs> what you just so. had. And then you're like, <laughs> let me let me experience that again. Let me experience that again. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a different uh, driver for yeah. sure. Um, wonderful. Uh, so. I don't think I have any other thoughts about this outside of like, yeah, I can picture myself on your back porch and having this for the 4th yeah. of July. This definitely help uh, replenish some fluid loss due to <laughs> high temperatures. Mm -hmm. I would say that it finishes dry. There's not, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's a K97? Yep, okay. it's a green package. Right, I mean, there really isn't any kind of uh, yeast derived aftertaste or yeast derived. No, it should be pretty clean except yeah. for that weird upturn at the end. Yeah. Well, which is more of like a softness. Mm -hmm. It's like it's almost like a combination of the malt softness and the carbonation softness, too. There's like just like this, like mellow. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It's like a pillow yeah. smoothness, right? Yeah. yeah. It's great. It's comforting in a light beer way, where in the wintertime, comforting from like a, a good, dark, a, a big brown, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. moderate, like a, yeah. you know, just a good stout or porter, right? It's comforting in a very different way. Yeah. It's like, it's no how roast. To, it's yeah. how to get comfort in the summertime. That's right. Comfort in the summertime. A, a nice light blanket rather than a comforter. Right. All right. All right. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's it. I love that's it. it. All right, it's a good summer beer. Yeah, we'll take it. First entry into the summer beer can. Yeah, let's hit it. Um, so, we'll see you on the back porch. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you subscribe to our channel, you'll know that we do this kind of thing every single week. So, if you don't know, subscribe to our channel. For John and Mike, brew-news.com. Brew on. Cheers.